Hello, Patriots. I'm Lee Watts, and this is Patriot Point, your source for Kentucky news and analysis from a conservative, Christian, and common sense point of view. Well, this week, we're not only bringing you Kentucky news, but this Kentucky news affects national news. And what this is, is earlier this week, on this most recent Wednesday, the senior senator of Kentucky, Mitch McConnell, was giving a press conference. And then in the middle of the press conference, he just freezes for about 19 seconds. And it looks like he just has a stroke right there on live TV. Um, We're going to actually look at this for a second, and then we're going to be talking about, well, what happens if he has to resign for health reasons? Who's going to be the new senator? It's not going to be who you expect. Uh, It's not going to be who you choose either. We'll talk about that. Um, So we'll be looking into this. But first, let me show you this interview that he was giving, this press conference, and then we'll talk about who might be replacing Mitch McConnell. We're on a path to finishing the NDA uh, this week. It's been good bipartisan cooperation and a string of uh, Okay, Mitch. Anything else you want to say? I'm sure let's go back to your office. Do you want to say anything else to the press? Now, of course, we hope that Senator McConnell will be able to recover into good health, uh, but he's obviously not in good health right now. I mean, two very different times during this interview. Uh, if you are watching closely, you can see his eyes almost rolled up in the back of his head, completely unresponsive. Uh, And hes I've been talking about this on the program now for the last year or two, that he's in poorer health than what is commonly known. Well, it is now commonly known uh, what we've been talking about for years. Now, let's talk about when he would be replaced. A senator serves for six-year terms up in the federal level in Washington. Now, this is different from the state levels. A a state-level senator up in Frankfurt will serve for four-year terms, but at six years on the national level, which means Mitch McConnell, is his seat is not up for election until the year 2026. But if he should happen to pass away or resign for health reasons before that, Who's going to be replacing him and what's the process for this? Well, here is the process for it. It all has to do with the 17th Amendment to the United States Constitution. Here's what it says. When vacancies happen in the representation of any state in the Senate, the executive authority of such state shall issue writs of election to fill such vacancies, provided that the legislature of any state may empower the executive thereof to make temporary appointments until the people fill the vacancies by election as the legislature may direct. So what this means in plain English is if there is a vacancy from somebody in the Senate, then whoever is the governor of that state, they get to appoint the senator until the next election cycle. They also put in their parts where the state legislature can tinker with this process and how they want to make that process work to their individual needs. Uh, So here's what could possibly happen, in fact, likely to happen based on the constitutional requirements if Mitch's seat becomes vacant for whatever reason. Um, First of all, because the state legislature was concerned that Andy Beshear just might appoint himself to become the next senator. Uh, See, this has happened in Kentucky history before. We used to have Governor Happy Chandler, then there was a vacancy, and poof, we had Senator Happy Chandler. And there's no law, obviously, we just read it, that would stop Andy Beshear from doing that. And uh, he wants to be up in D.C. with all of his liberal buddies anyway. So the state legislature, knowing that Mitch is in very bad health, three years ago, back when Andy got in power, they said, well, we need to cut this off at the pass. So they added to this saying the requirement is the governor can appoint who he wants, but who he wants must come from the same party as the departing senator. So that ensures that Andy Bashir can appoint himself. Now, who's going to pick the people that the governor chooses from? 
They added a law in to that that says the uh, party of the departing senator, their party will select three people that the governor may then choose from. So it's not like the Republicans of Kentucky are going to be having a primary. It is going to be the Republican Party of Kentucky's state level leadership. They will choose the candidate pool. Uh, so whoever it's going to be is going to be somebody who's really in good standing with what's called RPK, uh, Republican Party of Kentucky, because they're the ones that will be putting up the can- different candidates. Um, now, l- let's say what if Mitch happens to pass away or is forced to resign before the new governor election? Uh, well, first of all, he will not resign. Uh, there's no law that requires him to resign. Uh, if he is sick and he doesn't show up, um, then he can stay there till the next election. Nothing would force him to resign. In fact, if you remember back in early March, I think it was March the 8th, uh, he had some kind of accident where he fell down and he stayed out of Congress, didn't show up at all for a month and a half. Uh, in fact, the, some of the Republicans up there in Congress were talking about saying, listen, uh, maybe we should choose a new leader because Mitch McConnell has served as the Republican Party leadership in the Senate since 2007. And he's just gone for a month and a half for his health problems. So as soon as they started talking about replacing him, then all of a sudden, oh, he said he's better and he can come back. Uh, Obviously, his health is very fragile. So uh, if something should happen before the new governor takes office in January, if Mitch is still alive, he will not resign. Uh, But let's say he is still alive, okay? Uh, If, Lord forbid... Andy Bashir happens to win re-election. No, 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 no. Then Mitch is will be forced to step down for health or dies. Then the Republican Party puts up three people. Andy Bashir will choose the absolute worst, weakest person that he possibly can to be Kentucky's next senator. Now, you would think that the governor of a state would want the the best person they possibly could up there in Washington to represent your state in the United States Senate. He's not going to do that. Andy Bashir would appoint the worst person he possibly can. Why? Well, because in just a, a two and a half years after that, there's going to be an election for that position, and the Democrats are going to want to defeat whichever person that is. In fact, if Andy loses this coming November, yes, please. Uh, then I would, I'd bet, I'd bet my house that Andy Bashir would try to run for that position himself. Now, let's say that uh, the Republican candidate, which is Daniel Cameron, let's say he wins the position. Well, then Daniel Cameron has a lot of different options. First of all, he can resign the governorship. His lieutenant governor becomes governor, and then that person can appoint Daniel Cameron to be the next Kentucky state, uh, Kentucky national level senator. Remember, Daniel Cameron used to be the lawyer for Mitch McConnell, and so he cut his political teeth not here in Kentucky, being attorney general. He cut his political teeth up there in D.C. working for Mitch. And he was asked in a KET interview back during the Republican primary specifically about this, and he dodged that question left and right. Uh, But I think it would be unlikely that he would do that, seeing as how he would have just been elected. So chances are he would appoint somebody else that the Republican Party would put up. So who are some of the likely people that the Republican Party of Kentucky would put as the choices? Well, I think one of the most likely people would be uh, Kentucky Congressman James Comer. He represents Kentucky's first congressional district, uh, which is mostly over in Western Kentucky. He is known statewide. And in the last several months, he's uh, been there in the House, has been leading the investigations into the Biden corruption scheme, a scandal. A scandal scheme is both of them at the same time. And so he's getting a lot of national attention. A lot of Republicans, conservatives are liking the heat and pressure that he is bringing onto Joe Biden. So uh, he would be very well positioned to move uh, from the lower house to the upper house up there in Congress. And I think would be very likely uh, would be one of the people on the list. Yeah.
defend democracy. The misinformation poses a threat to our nation's health. Climate change is an emergency. Democratic socialism. Codify women's right to choose. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15. and I think would be very likely uh, would be one of the people on the list and would probably be a good choice for that. Uh, everybody and their dog in Kentucky politics is going to be vying for this position, would love to get this job. I mean, this is the key job in the state in politics. Uh, you get to stay longer than a governor does. And so uh, they'll put up, everybody's going to be wanting that, uh, but they're only going to choose three names. And uh, guess whose name is probably not going to be on the candidate list that is selected? My name will not be on that list. Uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, but everybody in their dog who's in politics and Republicans is going to try to get on there. Uh, after all, Mitch is 81 years old. Uh, he has been in the United States Senate since 1985. Uh, do you realize you could buy a house for like 40000 some dollars uh, when he got into office? Uh, when he got into office, I was in middle school and I'm now in my 50s. I think we, if there was ever a reason, ever a poster child for why we should have term limits, uh, put Mitch McConnell's picture right there. Uh, we definitely should be doing this. So that's where we're at right now. Uh, if something should happen to Mitch, uh, up until January of this year, Andy Bashir gets to choose the replacement. After January of next year, uh, it depends who's governor at that time. It might be either Andy Bashir or Daniel Cameron, and we would get two very, very different choices. So let me ask you a question and put your quote in the comments on who do you think would be the best person that the governor, let's say it's Daniel Cameron, let's say it's a Republican governor, Lord help us. Uh, who do you think would be the best person that Governor Cameron could appoint to be the new senator from Kentucky? Uh, so we'd have Rand Paul and this other person. So put not don't just put a name in the comments. Put down the reasons why you think that this would be a good person that the Republican uh, Party, uh, Republican Party of Kentucky, should consider. Who knows? Uh, if there's enough support for whoever comes up, they might wind up actually getting the position. So this is what's going on in Kentucky news this week. Some of the analysis behind all of this and the reason some of these laws exist. Hello, Patriots. I'm Lee Watts, and this is Patriot Point, your source for Kentucky news and analysis from a conservative Christian and common sense point of view. Well, this week we'll be talking about Kentucky income tax rates. Uh, for years, Kentuckians have been promised that they are going to be getting a discount in their tax rates. <laughs> However, it turns out you are not going to be getting a discount in your income tax rates. What? So that's what we're going to be examining this week. Who made this promise to Kentuckians? Why is this promise not being kept? And who is responsible for all of this? Uh, and we'll give you all of these answers in this week's Patriot Point. But before we get into the news, I've got a personal matter I want to go over with you. Um, my wife's out of town for a few days, so I've decided to grow a beard, and I can't decide whether I think she'll like it or not. Hmm. Hmm. So uh, give, I want to give your opinion here, all right? What do you think? Should I keep it or should I shave it off? Put your comments in the comment section below, and you'll see next time whether I got a fuzzy face or whether I shave it off. Well, let's get to this week's news, which is Kentucky income tax rates. We've been promised a discount. Why are we not getting it? Here's the reason why. For years, Kentucky had a 6% uh, personal income tax rate. 
However, when the Republicans took control of the state legislature, they said they want to get rid of it entirely and move it all the way down to 0%. There are some other states that have no personal income tax at all, and that has worked out exceedingly well for those states. It's really attracted a lot of people to move there, built up a lot of industry. Uh, and so the Republicans said, all right, we're in charge now. We want to move your tax rate down to zero. Now, they first did this a few years ago, back in 2022, it was called House Bill 1. Uh, and they said, we're not going to drop it from uh, uh, what it is now to zero in one day. Because some other states did that, and it did not work out well for them. It was too big of a shock to the system. So they said, we're going to do this incrementally every year. Misinformation poses a threat to our nation's health. Climate change is an emergency. Democratic socialism. Codify. Everyone's right to choose. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15. going to be getting a discount in your income tax rates. What? So that's what we're going to be examining this week. Who made this promise to Kentuckians? Why is this promise not being kept? And who is responsible for all of this? Uh, and we'll give you all of these answers in this week's Patriot Point. But before we get into the news, I've got a personal matter I want to go over with you. Um, my wife's out of town for a few days. So I've decided to grow a beard and I can't decide whether I think she'll like it or not. Hmm. Hmm. So I, give, I want to give your opinion here. All right. What do you think? Should I keep it or should I shave it off? Put your comments in the comment section below and you'll see next time whether I got a fuzzy face or whether I shave it off. Well, let's get to this week's news, which is Kentucky income tax rates. We've been promised a discount. Why are we not getting it? Here's the reason why. For years, Kentucky had a 6% uh, personal income tax rate. However, when the Republicans took control of the state legislature, they said they want to get rid of it entirely and move it all the way down to 0%. There are some other states that have no personal income tax at all, and that has worked out exceedingly well for those states. It's really attracted a lot of people to move there, built up a lot of industry. Uh, and so the Republicans said, all right, we're in charge now. We want to move your tax rate down to zero. Now, they first did this a few years ago, back in 2022. It was called House Bill 1. Uh, and they said, we're not going to drop it from uh, uh, what it is now to zero in one day, because some other states did that, and it did not work out well for them. It was too big of a shock to the system. So they said, we're going to do this incrementally. Every year we want to lower it by a half a point, maybe a full point, where we can move all the way to zero. Well, when they first did this, Andy Bashir vetoed the bill. He's like, no, we need to have more government spending. I need more money. And so he didn't want to give the discount, so he vetoed this bill. Well, they overrode him because they can override the vetoes. Uh, however, the next year, Republican legislature passed another bill to lower the income tax rate per, for the state level, another half percent lower. Well, this time, Andy Bashir signed that bill. So here's a question to think about it. Why would he in one year, he veto this bill saying, oh no, we need to have the money. We got to take the people's money for government spending. And then the next year, when it turns out that was very popular and that worked very well, he went ahead and signed it saying, oh, what a good idea this is. Try to take credit for it. 
Now, here's the thing. If you are voting on something or vetoing something on principle, principle doesn't change. And yet his is changing back and forth depending on what is popular at the time. And this is the key difference between a politician and a statesman. A politician moves on whatever is popular, whatever their party wants. A statesman will always move all of their actions according to principle. Principle is consistent in its actions. Principle before popularity. Principle even before party. Principle always. Well, Andy Bashir has just been going with whatever seems popular at the time. He'll veto it. He'll sign it. But the state legislature is not even going to pass a bill next year to lower this anymore for Bashir to sign or veto. And here is the reason why. It's because a state legislature is prevented legally from lowering the state income tax next year because of restrictions they put on themselves. Uh, when they first started lowering this, they said in order to lower it the next year and keep this up, two requirements have to be met. Number one, the state has to have uh, a certain savings account. They call it basically a rainy day fund where they want at least 10% of their usual annual revenue income set aside just in case there's an emergency. Uh, this is a very good idea. Personally, I wish it was a little more than 10%, uh, but it's a sound idea to have a rainy day fund, and they have met that requirement. However, there's a second requirement. The second requirement says that the state revenue, tax revenue for one year, must be greater than the spending and appropriations uh, for the next year if taxes were reduced by 1% or more. Uh, so there's a lot of math behind that, but the, at the end of the day, it comes down to they didn't meet that requirement and they wound up falling about $435 million short. So because that the two requirements were not met, the your tax break this next year is not going to be continuing as was the intention. So if they say, well, if they have to have spending and appropriations has to be, uh, you know, equal to or less than what you're going to be giving a discount for, the answer, in my opinion, would be, well, just cut spending. What a crazy idea would that be? Uh, one of the people of the Capitol is a senator by the name of Senator Chris McDaniels. Uh, and he was talking about this recently. He is the chairman for the Senate's Appropriation and Revenue Committee. He said, I don't see us cutting any place. So he's like, we're not going to be cutting spending on really anything we're spending right now. However, what he did mention is that they were going to be doing what's called spending restraints. So what this is, say we're not going to increase spending for any of the programs and we're not going to be taking on new programs that would require spending. Uh, so that's the way they intend to uh, get back to being able to give the people this income tax break. Uh, so Governor Bashir in a press conference just last Thursday he went on to come out and say Kentuckians don't have to worry about why the physical requirement wasn't met. Yes, we do worry about this. Hey, how come this requirement's not been met? Let me tell you exactly the reason why Andy Bashir says, hey, don't worry about this. Don't even think about it. It's because Biden and Bashir's policies have led to massive inflation. And when massive inflation happens, the people quit spending their money as much. And because they're not spending their money, there's not tax revenue on that money, which is why the legislature wasn't able to meet the requirement. It all goes down to the Republicans want to cut your taxes, but the Democrats right now have the top seat in government and they're making inflation go through the roof, which is messing everything up. So that's the reason why I hope you are registered to vote, uh, because we got an election coming up here in a uh, little less than 60 days. So get out there and let's vote these Democratic policies out of office. So uh, I'm Lee Watts, and I approve this message. Uh, so that's what we've got going on right now. Uh, now, Bashir's opponent to become the next governor is Mr. Daniel Cameron. Uh, his position on this, he has come out very clearly on this and says he wants to get back to reducing Kentucky's personal state level income tax down to 0% as quickly as can possibly be done. So these are our two different positions on this. Uh, I hope that you will say what your position on this is with your vote this November. 
Uh, now, with all of that being said this week, I have been doing Patriot Point now every single week, sometimes multiple times a week for four years now without a break. So uh, September is my birthday. Also, my wedding anniversary. So I'm going to be taking two weeks off. Uh, in addition to this, my wife is having some serious health problems, and it looks like I may be having to take a major trip to go take care of her for a little while. Uh, but will we, we will be back in two weeks to bring you Kentucky news from a Christian conservative standpoint. Uh, if Andy Bashir, Biden, or the liberals try to pull anything, I trust all you patriots will stand up and stop them until I get back on the air in two weeks. Climate change is an emergency. Democratic socialism. Codify. Everyone's right to choose. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15.